utajiri wa aina hii tuahitaji tufuatilie na tujue kanisa litafanyaje what shall the church do now i know that when we begin to talk about wealth that's a word that people don't like especially when it is mentioned in church maybe they can mention wealth in the news on tv in the secular seminars lakini pastor yoyote ambaye anatumia jina wealth huyo ni mtu wa kujaribu kukemea kwa online but i'm not intimidated by noise makers as long as the word wealth is in the bible we shall handle it hallelujah because god's people must be empowered to be wealthy are we together so this is a topic that is dominating just work on my sound a little bit it has a sharp is a topic that is modern i mean uh, dominating the modern society and you know constantly we are bombarded with messages that equate money and possessions uh with happiness and joy if you have money you are happy if you have joy you are happy lakini i mean if you have possessions you are happy but the bible has a different view concerning wealth and so the bible teaches us that wealth is not just material possessions uh wealth has a broad range of assets spiritual riches and even ethical behavior as part of wealth for instance uh there are seven dimensions of wealth or spheres one is spiritual wealth spiritual number two social social wealth number three mental wealth that the iq god has given you is a, actually a wealth there is physical wealth number four and number five there is family family wealth number six career career wealth and financial now we place financial wealth as number seven so that you don't think that money is wealth though it's still part of it praise god now one of the apostles of christ john writes to elder gaius and we're going to read the first letter i mean the third letter of john is only one chapter uh from verse one and look at something said by this elder by the spirit the elder to beloved gaius whom i love in truth so this is john writing to gaius whom he loves in the truth verse two what does he tell this elder beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers listen this was a greeting it was a form of greeting the apostles always greeted the church paul for instance used a different type of greeting paul said uh, grace and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ when he wrote to titus and to timothy he included mercy he said grace peace grace and mercy and peace from god and our lord jesus christ john says beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers in other words where were gaius nothing should stop you from being who you are supposed to be anything you touch should prosper gaius you should be, be like people in the apostolic house who are in psalms chapter 1 verse 3 quickly go to psalms 1 3 you shall be like a tree planted by the river of water or the word that you will bring forth your fruit in your season huh? and your leaf your career your business your shop shall not wither hey. and whatever you do you shall prosper is that from the bible let's 
try another one. Genesis 39 from verse 1. Now Joseph had been taken down and Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh captain of the guard an Egyptian brought him bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there verse 2 the Lord was with Joseph if God is with you how can you stay down and he was a successful man how can a prisoner house boy garden boy be successful and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. That's an anointing. And that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. How many of you want this grace? All that you do in Nairobi will now begin to prosper. Listen, if I preach about salvation, people will be saved. Are you listening to me? If I preach about anointing, mutapadana nayo. When I preach about healing, itafanyika. How about if I preach about wealth? Your profile must change this year. Oh yes. Look at Joseph. This is grace from God. Verse 4. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer over his house. Wherever Joseph went, he became an overseer. Even the ants have overseers. Zile ndududogo. Kiziangalia vizuri. Kutona kuna kamoja kanaongoza zile zingine. And all that he had put under his authority. And verse 5. So it was from that time that he made him overseer of his house. And, and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptians house for Joseph's sake. Joseph kama huyu mulimuona wapi. Oh my God. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had look in the house and in the field joseph was working in the house but the blessing extended over the walls all the way to the field glory to god so you can see ladies and gentlemen this matter of wealth is a serious matter uh, i don't want necessarily to repeat what i shared in the first service but i want you to go listen to what we shared in the next five days we'll talk about this matter until something happens the convocation is coming on tuesday and wednesday we'll run with the same message so you have an appointment with the destiny even if you are in machakos you come and then go back at night kwa sababu ni mejitolea ili maisha yako ibadilike hata we jitole mwambia mazako hata we jitole now what is wealth? Worthiness of state of being rich and affluent. That's no more dictionary. Here are to abrite. Worthiness of state of being rich and affluent. You are not here. All having a plentiful supply of material goods uh, and supply. You are having a plentiful supply of material goods. And even more supply. That's wealth. Now, but we are uncovering because wealth has a tendency of a hiding. Inapenda sana kujificha. We can use the example of Israel. Wealth in Israel was hidden in the hands of the Gentiles and the prophecy would go like this. That uh, horses even young horses will come their kings will come bringing wealth to israel glory to god now when israel was in bondage in babylon everything they had carried from israel was hidden in that babylonian captivity so god had to anoint a king 
in that time who was king Cyrus okay sawa god listen to me those are manifestations now god had to anoint king Cyrus to have an anointing that whatever he said however he led whatever instructions he gave that would help Israel to recover their wealth so god will use me to declare certain instructions to share things so that they will help you to identify the wealth that is associated with you <clears throat> let me say this that redemption salvation is a package we are given by god and that package not only deals with forgiveness of sins that package includes our wealth brother just try to reduce the throws eh? those throws are very loud and just raise this one here now nimesema hivi ile baraka ya wokovu hiyo package that you are given salvation it included your prosperity and your wealth wealth and prosperity is part of the redemption and when jesus blood was shed on the cross it paid for our prosperity our success and our wealth are we together now so a couple of things about this wealth i'll be dealing with about five things in the coming days number one i'll call this like principles or dimensions of wealth the number one is that wealth comes from god and it's for god it's from god and for god it's not just for you it's not just for me it's for god now psalms 24 is a very famous verse in this house verse 1 The Bible says in Psalms 24 verse 1 the earth is the Lord's and all his fullness the world and those who dwell therein let me remind you i have said before there are four things that belong to the Lord in this verse number 1 the earth the earth itself which is soil this soil this soil belongs to God number 2 what is under the fullness of the earth whatever has filled that are the rocks the stones the minerals under the earth belongs to the lord and i pray for you that that land that is yours something underground will be found i don't waste words i say things in the spirit number 3 the world that is on that earth the world is anything built on the earth buildings science and technology in a system built on the earth it belongs to the lord and number 4 those who dwell there in the people are an asset you are an asset god is proud of you as part of his wealth the people belong to god listen so wealth is from god and it's for god are we together now So whether it's material whether it's social whether it's physical whatever kind of wealth it is whether it's spiritual whether it's social whether it's physical whether it's material I tell you the truth is from God and for God Now in Genesis 24 and verse 1 we have a little uh description about a great father of faith called Abraham The Bible says now Abraham was old. All right, take this girl to the powerhouse. She needs deliverance. Uh msaidie huyu dada mkamwombe kuja Mwaura na Onesmus na Maina. Ah ah, tuma nani Maina weka chini kwenda enda nani because the daughter of Zion. Penina, I just pray for that daughter of Zion. Atakiwi ku interrupt the word of God is more important than the trouble in our spirit. Hao watatu watasaidia 
uh, kumwombea. Did you come with her? Okay, unamjua? Okay, don't worry. I think you are very anointed back on Kanini na Zaya. Just pick her up. Nina quickly. Msaidie muombeni hata kama ni hapo nyuma ama pande ingine. That's good. We like it when people come to the church to look for help. This is where answers are found. So it's not a problem. This is the place, ndio? Hata shetani akitaka ku attend service anaweza ukokea hapa. Tuko pamoja. So msiwe na waswas although she is not a devil she is a wonderful uh, child of god who needs help amen na your help itapatikana saa hii kwa jina la Yesu amen we can say amen glory to god unakumbuka jesus akihubiri kwa mark chapter 2 chapter 1 alafu shetani anaongea pia si ni sawa so it's no more it's in the bible So he was advanced in age and the Lord had blessed Abram in a few things. How had God blessed Abraham? In how many things? All things verse 2. This man was so blessed. So akaanza sasa kutayarisha familia yake na ili awabariki na so forth and so forth but I just wanted you to know Abram was no joke. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and read some verse there because wealth is from God and is for God. Hallelujah. Ili ukipata usijue tu usifikirie tu ni yako wewe peke yako. It's coming from God. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and then verses There are a couple of verses there. Uh, let me pick it up to read from verse verse 6. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in all his ways, to walk in his ways and to fear him, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains, and springs that flow out of valleys and hills surely if you are a real estate guy if you find such a land is it not a good place it's a good land it has brooks of water it has fountains and springs that flows you know uh, out of valleys and hills what a good land huh Verse 8 a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates and a land of olive oil and honey a land in which you, sh- you eat bread without scarcity in which you will lack nothing what a land a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper is he talking about DRC is talking about Kenya glory to god and in that land you lack nothing when you have eaten and are full then you shall bless the lord your god for the good land which he has given you read on and beware that you do not forget the lord your god by not keeping his commandments his judgments his statutes which i command you today wealth riches possessions have a way of trying to steal the show and causing somebody to forget the lord will be giving you the balance next verse lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them when that time moment when that time comes by the way you will build your own house beautiful house go back to that kind of house you will build amen How come when you dhambi ndo wanajenga vitu kama hizi na nyinyi mahaslas mnakaa top building na waombea hiyo building mnakaa siku moja mtakuwa na yenu kama hiyo kabla Yesu ajarudi hatutafurahi tu binguni hata hapa tutafurahi hatutakuwa na nyumba nzuri kule binguni mansion hata hapa utakuwa nayo if you have an agenda for God Now then verse the next verse and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied do you see god multiplies 
God multiplies silver. God multiplies money. God multiplies resources. God does this kind of stuff. He increases your business, your hearts. You know, wealth in the Old Testament was counted in terms of livestock. Livestock was cash. Amen. So God multiplies these things. I am believing God, you know, in the morning I was telling the early service, I saw a vision of this young generation and how God will establish you and make you wealthy and this anointing is resting upon you. Muliona vile juzi vile offering ilitolewa. A hundred thousand Kenya shillings. We have a main conference na ni challenge online zikawambia bila naona mnajaribu ku contribute. I'm still waiting by tomorrow mtu afanye ile kitu. I'm very serious. Lazima ifanyike. Sio kitu kadogo muna fundraise. Ka kitu kadogo muna fundraise. Lazima kuwe na mtu atasoti hiyo maneno. And his life will never be the same again. And I'll be looking at midnight kwa hiyo WhatsApp ana siraragi mapema mimi kifika saa ine usingizi napotea my day begins at night all right so uh, that's a minimum unajua god was healing kenya and we were paying the debt of kenya kwa hivyo mtu yote alichukua pesa yote kwa mtu yoyote hata yachukue sehemu arudi I have given you a spiritual explanation. Kenya has paid our debt. Mwenye anjashika atafanywa kesha. Hii kesha tunakuja kuongeza prayer item. Muniombe mimi sishikagi hizi vitu haraka. Verse 14. So, when your hearts are multiplied and you have built beautiful houses, everything around you is multiplied there is a danger of your heart being lifted up and you forget the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage unajua hapa tunaombeaga watu then you begin to drive a car you begin to build a house na nini alafu naanza kutuletea shida ukisema moyave ni nikipaka hapo wanaiba side mirror So either to kuombea ama tusikuombee ili usikuwe na hiyo shida ya side mirror. Lakini sisi tutakuombea na hakuna mtu ataiba side mirror. Alafu naanza kusema nimepata kanisa ingine man of God mahali kuna security ya hii gari yangu. Lakini sisi ndio tulio. Ambia mwanza kuacha hiyo mchezo. Mahali ulipokea hiyo kitu unaheshimu hiyo altar unakaa hapo hata ukinunua roli. Piga makofi kama unakubaliana mimi. tukideliver mtu kama huyo alafu bado anasema sasa nimepata pasta wangu pasta yako alikuwa wapi wakati ulikuwa una shida unafikiri ni drama tunafanya hapa concert this is a real deal lakini Mungu akikutuma Morocco tutakuwa escort na offering praise god the danger of hell is hearts of people are lifted look at the next verse now so you forget the lord who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which there were fiery serpents na kusaidia mambo ya serpents there were scorpions and thirsty land he provided water there was no water but who brought water for you out of the flint rock look at what he did who fed you in the wilderness with manna which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you to so do you good in the end Most of the troubles in the wilderness these were tests. God was testing your heart. Many times when you are pursuing career, money, investment, business and so forth, the next level, sometimes God tests you to see whether you can handle things at the next level. Even a preacher, we are usually tested to see whether we can handle money at the next level. Niliwapatia ka story za mani, sio? Wengine mlikuja juzi. Story number 1. Nilienda Switzerland 2001. Church life church was one year. Nimeenda kuhubiri European conference. Naenda church iko na red carpet kama hii. Sasa hiyo tu kwa na microphones. Zilikuwa na zile mic za zamani. 
Yaani naona kanisa iko na equipment na inakuwa na ingine kwa store. Arabu ka Saud wanaweka kadogo. Wanasema inua mahewa, inua. Lakini wainui wanapenda soft ka music. Nasema my god. Arabu hata kwa ibada hawakutoa offering. Wakasema ati eh, the 39 million they needed. Sorry. The 39 million they needed uh, for 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 the church ati walitoa in January. So the rest of the year wanakaka tu offering pale wewe ukiingia ukitoka ukitaka kutoa unaonge but all the bill of the church has been met. Hey. Nikaanza kusema oh god. Si wanipea ile sound wameficha pale ambao watumi. Hawakunipea ngo, hawakunipea. Hata kama microphone sikupata. Nikahubiri conference kubwa eight nations hata Russia ilikuwa represented. Hawakunipea hata ka offering ya kupelekea mama. Nikahubiri mali pengine kuna kitu nilipewa ili wefunzo kwako na wengine ambao na tabia kama hiyo wakifikiria ukihubiri unapewa kabahasha 21 days in Switzerland I wasn't given nothing funga hiyo mlango kuna operations kuna kipindi imeanza huko by the way we need to train you to deliver people sio kila wakati unakuwa delivered kila kitu wakati unakuwa delivered you should join the company of deliverers wangapi wangependa good tutaletea subject ya how to deliver blessed be jesus so i mean sasa atanika fanya kazi ya bwana kabisa sikupewa chochote you know what happened later nilipewa gift swiss army knife Unajua Swiss Army Knife. Baada ya kufanya kazi nyingi nilipewa kisu. Ile pande hii naweza fungua soda, pande hii naweza kuwa nini? Pande hii naweza kunini? Unajua hiyo kisu? Ndio nilipewa. Hakuna kitu kingine nilipewa. So, I'm in the house waiting to be picked up at 11 to be taken to Zurich Airport. Nimepark kila kitu kwa tayari. In this house there was nobody because the guy was working so that he could come the one who was sent to take me to the airport. So I looked at that house there was a bookshelf. Natafuta kitabu naweza kusoma nikingojea. They are all they were all in Germany and French. Then kaona kitabu kadogo ka English. Nikasema acha nisomage haka maana hii lugha nyingine siju. So nikalalia coach hivi nasoma ka kitabu ka wenyewe. Hata sikumbuki nilikuwa nasoma nini because of what the Lord told me. Then the Lord spoke to me. He said, "I brought you here to test you on money and you have passed the test ah nimepita so i became chiki i told god nionyeshe nimepata marks ngapi i literally asked the lord show me a sign that i passed the test and that time i'm coming home and how many of you know when you have three girls in the house and you are coming from abroad how should you come how do you think will be the second coming of jesus <laughs> <laughs> so this driver came and they said man of god are you ready i said i'm ready we are pulling the bags he said by the way then he just said by the way then he put his ha- hand in the wallet He pulled a thousand Swiss franc. That was 70,000 Kenya shillings. He gave me. Hey. Nikajua nimepita nini? 70 over 100. Is that a A B C D E? Hiyo ni ngapi watu wa shule? B minus. B plus. Ningeenda university hata ama singeenda. Good. I passed the test. From that day, I always believe God to provide for my travels. Huh? In fact, many times and Pastor Mark knows and the other pastors, I usually don't ask Life Church the accounts to pay for my tickets when I travel out of the country because it's too much. It has a budget. So often I activate my own anointing. God provides in his own way. Like this year I will go to several nations. Ukiesabu hizo matiket haiwezekani. 
Okay, inawezekana mkitoa nini lakini at, sijakubali. Ni mimi nimekataa. Sijakubali church to take care of my bill in that area. I take care of it by the grace of God. Are you listening? Yeah. So I'm going to US for seven days, go to Australia seven days, go to Netherlands seven days. I'll go to Rwanda two days. I'll go to Siju where three days. Mwaka inaenda kidogo. Hakuna kukaa. Sijachoka mwaka hii. Nimepumzika last year. So nilikuwa naongezaga wiki ya kupumzika saa hizi hakuna kupumzika. So all those trips will require no no na dollar bado iko imehang 140 145. It's coming down. Eh? Uh, yeah, tulisema inakuja chini. I prophesied on 9th of February. And the Lord said, "Watch this day, write it down." Nani ka prophesy huko kasarani. It was amazing what God has done. And I'm not the only one. There are many others who have also prophesied into it, but to God be the glory. Somebody say wealth requires a testing. If you don't pass the test, you'll not go to the next level. Even Abraham was tested. You see chapter 24, he was blessed in all things, but chapter 22 is where he was tested about his only son Isaac. With every test, God will promote you to the next level in the spirit. Are we together? Let's go back to that Deuteronomy 8. Uh we are going to read to verse 18, then we uh transition very quickly. So you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he No, we are reading 16 17. We hadn't reached here. So he fed you in the wilderness 16, then 17. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might or, or the might of my hand has gained me this wealth. Wealth comes from God and is for God. It's not your power, your in, your your wisdom and your ability. It can only be the wisdom of God, God's ability, God's hand upon your hand for you to get wealth, you need God. It is him who causes you to gain wealth. So it says here, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. So this wealth and covering it we need God. He gives us power to get wealth. The Bible says for it is he who gives power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. In this verse wealth is given a purpose, is given a reason. What is the reason and the purpose of getting this wealth? That he may establish his covenant that he swore to our fathers as it is this day. Let me show you this covenant of Abraham how it is fulfilled so that wealth can be attached to God's purpose because wealth is for God's agenda. Galatians chapter number 3 verse 13 and 14 talks about cast as he who died uh, on the cross. Now or he who is nailed on the cross Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 the bible say Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having been cast become a curse for us for it is written cast is everyone who hangs on a tree so Jesus hung on the tree verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the gentiles in Christ the blessing of Abraham Somebody say the blessing of Abraham. Blessing of Abraham that covenant and promise God gave Abraham that through you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles but in Christ Jesus. In other words, when you preach the gospel, look, the promise uh, and that they might re- might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. That receiving the promise of the spirit through faith has to do with hearing the gospel, being born again, receiving the holy spirit. Christ Jesus is preached to the Gentiles as a light to the world. Are you listening? And so the preaching of the gospel 
to the nations. The word Gentiles is the word nations. When we bring the gospel to the nations, what God originally promised Abraham is now fulfilled through the preaching of the gospel. How many of you know, preaching the gospel requires financing, major financing. It requires major financing. Can you see, filling a stadium with people and mobilizing and organizing and doing those kind of stuff, hey, it's very expensive. Huh? So, if, if we go from city to city and we shoot, how much do you think that will cost? It's a lot of money. I can tell you, I've been preaching the gospel for a while. Preaching the gospel. Nilijua tulitemberewa. Sina mwambia kwa tunatemberewa kwa? Nilimwambia ama sijawaambia. Tunatemberewa kwa na kina nani? Ni sawa, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. The Lord showed me in the morning young people from the streets coming after us in the morning. So, sioni moja wao. Ni sawa, they will be delivered. Unaogopa? Vile <laughs> mumenyamaza mpaka Nairobi haitaki mchezo nataka mtu akoke vizuri anrogwabo and bewitchable Wanakutupia usingizi na bado umefungua macho Glory to God. Somebody said the blessing of Abraham. Now, that blessing of Abraham, for it to reach the nations, there has to be the involvement of our wealth and our riches. Number two, it's not just from God and for God. It's another dimension of wealth. We need our revelation of God. Our revelation of God, how we, how we, we see God huh? will impact how we receive wealth. God is lost to many of us. His ways are not known to many. His purposes are not known to many. If you can know the purpose of God, the ways of God, you can gain a revelation of him. Then it will open up a way for you to begin to gain his own riches and his own wealth. Are we together? Number three, something else which we must deal with, I'm giving an outline which I'll deal with this later, is family foundations. Somebody say family foundations. Where you are coming from, how you are raised, things your parents used to say to you, things you saw at home, how life was going at home, the foundations there whether spiritual, physical, how things were declared, how things were shared, they impact on us positively or negatively in matters of wealth, family foundations. And let me tell you, I'll use this phrase, uh, a disclaimer, I'm not against anybody, but how a dynasty child will look at wealth is different from a hustler's view of wealth. I gave you a disclaimer, did I not? Are we together? <laughs> the other day in a men conference, look at me, I'm the one preaching. We were, now now umekua sasa DCI. Munataka drama kuliko neno la buwana. Kuna kanisa sinakuwaka na drama. So, Lord Jesus, help me. I was preaching in a place called Kianyaga in 1989. As soon as I began to preach, a Mukorino lady stood up in the middle. And she Na shut up. It's time to hear the word of God. 
na nikahubiri baadaye wakaniambia man of god umejaribu huyu mama akubaliagi mtu yote ahubiri hapa wewe you are the first man to preach hao wengine katikati anaanza ku disrupt the word of god is so important that we must not allow anything to disrupt the word are we together so somebody say family foundations those are important now and the other thing is working with god's agenda if you want wealth you need to work with god's agenda what is god's agenda in this time we work with his agenda you heard this story uh, from the great nigerian preacher called idahosa the late how with the tl osborne they were flying to another country and they were late from a convention and the flight was full and this guy was a bulldozer he went in to the flight and said anybody here would want to give up their seat because T.L. Osborne must go to the next crusade and one young man volunteered you have read the story he he left his journey stopped his journey said okay i give out my sin my seat let the preachers travel and then in the horse i told that young man powerful things how his name will be known everywhere and how be rich that's i hear is a uh, uh, dakote the guy who is a multi billionaire in africa his life changed for stepping into god's agenda because a man of god spoke to him are we together long ago my wife and i went to visit a minister friend i shared the story in the morning When we went to the house I could see a very dire need in that house. So I wrote something on my phone uh, on a page where a notepad in big letters I showed my wife. And the message was saying let's buy something for these people. And my wife noted it's good to have a wife ukisema kitu moja sio my case tutaonana saa nane. ambe mwanzako kapos tunaonana saa ngapi leo so and then uh, we had no budget no plan but the need provoked some giving in my spirit so after we had lunch and everything we told the couple let's go we went to a shopping and we bought something worth 85000 for them because there was a need in that house. I didn't have all the money, so I gave a certain portion, then I said by faith, Monday I'll send the money to the shop, the balance. Thank God the seller that time said, I've been looking at you since you entered here and I think you are a very important man. Are you the one or is another one? So, my mother likes you a lot. Nikasema let's take a selfie I take to my mother nikasema sawa nikakaa vizuri na nikasema and cuz my so I told my wife I feel and I sense in my spirit for meeting this need God is going to give me money that day by the time it was 11 at night I got a message from one of my friends in another country he said My husband and I we got prompted today to send you some dollars. I told my wife I told you before this before one hour before midnight. Glory to God. So wealth is usually released and shared in accordance with God's agenda. Glory to God. Let me give you a couple of scriptures about this matter of wealth and then i close so give me like five minutes uh the five minutes of a preacher no seven minutes and then we will have the choir and then we will be blessed glory to god in the highest now more or less wealth and riches are defined almost the same way as an abundance of material possessions uh that's the first definition but when it talk, comes to wealth there is a dimension of the quality of the abundance somebody say the quality of the abundance now number one, wealth is a blessing from god according to proverbs 
is a blessing from God. And the Bible says in this Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he has no sorrow with it. Adding sorrow there. That sorrow is like the labor of a mother giving birth. In the Hebrew language, that sorrow is real pain, literally a lot of toil and struggle. However, the blessing of the Lord makes rich. So you need and we need this blessing that makes somebody rich. This power to get wealth. It looks like an anointing. Power, it is he we read Deuteronomy 8.18. It is he who gives us the power to get wealth. That power is from God. Glory to God. Number two, wealth is a reward of obedience. Proverbs, I mean Deuteronomy 7 verse 12 and 13. Deuteronomy 7 verse 12 and 13. Wealth is as a result of our obedience. It's a reward. Here God tells Israel, then it shall come to pass because you listen to these judgments and to keep and do them that the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and mercy which he swore to your fathers. In other words, if you obey, if you listen and do, you listen and do and keep these commandments, these judgments, these statutes, then whatever I told your fathers in generations past like Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, I will do it to you. And verse 13 says, and he will love you and bless you and multiply you. I like that. And he will also bless the fruit of your womb, of the womb, your womb, and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and of the offspring of your flock in the land which he swore to your fathers to give to you. Look at the increase. Uh, he will show his love. He will bless. He will multiply. He will bless again. Glory to God. He will increase the cattle. This is out of our obedience. If we obey the word. Let me tell you something. In the New Testament, surely we have better promises. We have better promises of God. And we can hear from the Holy Ghost giving us instructions on what to do as he gives us power to get well. Listen. Pray to God. Ask him to guide you. Ask him to give you instructions. Ask him to show you the way. Ask him to teach you how he does his things. If you know what he wants you to do. And then you obey. And then you do it. I'm telling you the truth. He will then increase you. Bless you. Love you. Multiply you. Give you all these things that he has promised. Because it's in the word of God. Somebody shout amen. So. Wealth is also part of a reward system of obedience. Look at Proverbs 3 verse 9 that talks about in verse 9, honor the Lord with your possessions. Now, possessions is part of your wealth. And God is saying with that wealth, honor God. Honor God with what? Your possessions. So, if you obey God to use your possessions well, use them well. In honor to God. In pursuit of God's agenda and God's purpose. You are honoring the Lord with your car. You are honoring the Lord with your house. You are honoring the Lord with your landed buildings and possessions. You are honoring the Lord with your talents and gifts. You are honoring the Lord with the wisdom God has given you. And the knowledge he has given you. The spiritual insight he has given you. You are honoring the Lord with that possession. Then something will happen in the next verse. The Bible says it. Your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. That's old technology, old language of barns and vats. Today we'll be saying your career will be expanded. New doors will be opened to you. Blessings will overflow you, glory to God. Money will pursue you like crazy. When you honor the Lord with your possessions, where you keep your resources, your investment will multiply. This generation must be richer than the older generation. I said this generation must be rich and wealthier than the Old Testament generation. We have Jesus on the cross. He has shed the blood. We can break the witchcraft in our family foundations. We can destroy the altars that speak against our wealth. We can bypass our mothers and fathers. I declare to you that is hearing my voice. May the Holy Spirit give you power. 
to know how to break out and come to a place of increase. Remember, however, to honor the Lord with your possessions. Glory to God. Now, wealth, let me jump to something, is a result of enterprise and useful work. Enterprise. Enterprise. Wealth is as a result of enterprise. Look at Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. The Bible says, Proverbs 10 and verse 4, He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Let's read this in NLT. NLT. These three verses that are coming. Lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. Make a choice. Make a choice. Make a choice. Huh? This wealth does not just come because power is released. Ah. Mm. We sing a song. Mm. Mm. Come, 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 come. Lift your hand. Then you become wealthy. Apana. Apana. Lazimo utainuka. Utainama. Utanguka. Utainuka. Utaenda kazi. Are we together? Let the people do what? Chapter 12 verse 14. Proverbs 12 14. Wise words bring many benefits. And hard work brings rewards. Even for a preacher. If I'm a hard worker, there will be rewards in what I do. By the way, am I a lazy preacher in Nairobi? When you are counting lazy people, are there lazy people? Uh, uh, am I among the number? I was a candy. I was telling people in the lunch hour, the zeal of the house of the Lord has consumed me for the last 41 years. The zeal and you can mess up your kitu to celebrate 40 years. In a guja, muenda, your kitu to my kuja. Tell better. Sinibizuri kukura na mboka, mboka. Kukura na mboka. Mboka. Ukambani wa naela wa mboka. Are we together? So, somebody say wise words bring many benefits. So, wisdom there. You can say wisdom. Wisdom will bring you what? Many benefits. How about hard work? Hard work means you have a schedule when you wake up. There must be a time when you wake up. Right? You have goals for the day. You have a planner. You are saying this day I'm going to accomplish the following things. Those things you are designing and putting as goals are in line with with your vision and your agenda that you got from God. You must be knowing where you are going. You must have a vision. So that, let me tell you young people what you need to do. Print out this statement and put it in your office, in your bedroom, in your kitchen. The statement should read like this. Is what I am doing now adding value? to my purpose is what I am doing now adding value to my purpose or my vision you will discover what you are doing now like complaining, murmuring, complaining mama, is not adding value to your purpose huh you can be called for a meeting anytime and you are available. There's a problem. Yani mutio yote, unajua kuna watu wanapenda kutuandikia sana sana kwa inbox. Man of God, niombe saa hii. Na saa hiyo ni kukwanjia. Hata ajui ni kwapi, anataka, nikikaka mwingine, niombe saa hii. Man of God, ni kwangu ni kubaya. Waza, kwa heshima tu kidogo na uza pole pole tu. Do you have a pastor? Eh, ni vile ni meona, wewe, ndia una, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Sour too. So what I do, I make a declaration because I have, I have something I received from God. I tap in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I declare your problem to dissolve. Mwingine alikuwa na hiyo shida kaandika hivyo. Akaniletea testimony hata wiki. Man of God since kwa hiyo uliniombea. Kama mtoto kalipona hiyo shida kaisha hata daktari alisema hakuna kitu kama hiyo. Niliombea kwa mtu wa wenyewe. Hakutuma offering, hakutithe, sijui nani, sijui ana naga shachi wapi. Anyway, nashukuru nimebariki, amebarikiwa maana ni mtumishi wa Bwana uh, mshirika wa Yesu mahali. Lakini kila mtu aulize pastor yake amuombe. Na ukija life church tutakufundisha kujiombea. Tunaombea tu zile kesi kubwa kubwa. Si kusema niombe ili kukenyesha nijue kama nitapanda tomatoes ama potatoes. Bora kabisa. Sorry, tutakuombea lakini tafadhali uliza kitu muhimu. Somebody shout hard work. Proverbs uh, tumesoma 14 23 let's read this one. Well, this as a result of enterprise. Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Glory to God. Now, where well, the has a snare? Ecclesiastes 5:10. Where well, the has a potential danger? Sio tukufuatilia wealth 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 iko na potential danger. Yeah, let's read it in NLT. Those who love money will never have enough. Simple. How meaningless to think that wealth brings through happiness. It doesn't. There's a danger. Verse 13 of the same Ekle. Ekle 5.13. There's a severe evil which I've seen under the sun. Riches kept for their owner to his heart. Yani mtu ame ame hip up, ame hip up but bado anajiumiza na hiyo utajiri. It is a evil because wealth can cause heartache. Do you hear? Matthew 6:24 The Bible says No one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other you cannot serve God and Mammon Let me explain something there about Mammon Mammon is not money Mammon is a spirit of the Philistines that follow cash is a their god small g spirit that follows cash god is a spirit he cannot be compared to something which is not spirit now and there's a wisdom i will tell you young people and god's people don't just be keeping cash without a reason why you have large sums of cash because this spirit called mammon will see the cash and he will come for it Sijua sikia ni kwa alikuwa anapita wapi? Sijui ametaguka mguu, ameadmitiwa na hakuna mtu anakuwa na pesa, wewe ndio uko nazo, wana waliziona. Utatumia anko. So the wisdom is change your cash quickly into an asset which the devil cannot move. Did you hear what I say? Change your cash into assets that the devil cannot move spiritually eh give i put it in heavenly treasure or make an investment are we together that's a blessing now i will continue with this matter of wealth a little later but as i finish this i want to mention to you write this nine things down how wealth multiplies number one, wealth multiplies by giving somebody shout giving surely whatever you eat is lost in 24 hours is out of your body but what you give will not be lost number two, through investment invest something somewhere we have a circle invest there 
We have places you can invest in the stocks, in the boards, and the Holy Spirit knows what drama is coming where. Invest in dollars. <laughs> invest in what? But be very careful. Be listening to the spirit and movement of nations. Lest you are going to make a loss. Are we together? <laughs> So investment is important and there are investment experts who can tell you how to invest. Let me pause there. Young people, as we were not guided in the early 90s, all we did was to preach. Nobody told me invest. We invested in souls. We were soul dealers. We were in import-export business. Importing souls from hell, exporting them to heaven. Any money we got went into source investment enterprises. Well, nothing is lost because one of those souls who got saved in one of our meetings uh, is now a pastor and is a doctor somewhere in America and I'm going to ordain her into a minister, you know? And I'm sure that investment has come back after that two years. But I'm telling these young people, can you invest into something physical buy land invest in stocks invest in bonds do something at your age by the time you are being married you are not being married as a one-man guitar are you listening young ladies and young boys begin in investment when you are still young save in the circle even if it's 200 shillings or 1000 i assure you in 15 years you can do something major and build your own house. Start investments this year. I wish we knew that. I've written a new book. It's now being edited by some people. Impactful ministry. Eight stepping stones for ministry. How to be effective in ministry. Eight things. And uh, it's about 200 pages. It's a good book. And one of the principles is the principle, because I'm writing to ministers, is a principle of investment so that ministry and family does not suffer. Mana Squizo, Sisi, we went with my wife six months. We could not afford breakfast because we are not invested. We are not invested in souls. Manaskia, souls. So today, we need you to invest in souls and the savings. If you are saving souls, save money. That's good preaching. That's good preaching. After 10 years, you thank me. So you need to give. That's how it multiplies through investment. Through Number three, through wisdom. You need the wisdom of God. Somebody shout wisdom. Wisdom is so powerful. It's getting knowledge, insight from God on how to apply that knowledge and then you can be able to increase in your life. Number four, increase your skills. Go back to school. Go back to another course. Train. Learn another trade. Number five, creativity. Become creative. Creative. You know, uh, design clothes, design shoes, design hair designs. You know, go to look at the maize corn and see the way the maize corn has nice hair. Then come and create a salon and uh, draw that. Put it. Creativity. Learn from the natural mind. smart. So, creativity. Kwanza sa zire mekauka. It may shrink. Iko na color flani. Rafu mina chukoyo mind na ichoma. Praise God. Wealth multiplies through relationships. Number six is what? Relationships. Don't ignore relationships. Uh, be able to uh, associate with certain people. Let me tell you something. This is a man I know who was suffering so much in ministry, but he had a trade, had a skill. This man had one suit. He used, Alex, he used the suit five years. Suit moja. So Sandy and Ambadisha Koti and Achuna Rosa. I mean, the man suffered. So I went to preach for him and I discovered this man needs help from above and below. So I began to share wisdom with him. He told me to give him spiritual covering. It became real. Shared with him. 
uh, help him to shift a number of things, shift to the church where it was to another suburb. And from there, he began to use his skill and then discovered he had such great skills and then introduced him to a few friends. I did that. Later, those friends introduced him to other friends. And then it went like that until he was introduced to friends from outside the country. And guess what? Through that relationship, he was able to get a business which he built somebody's house. He made some money, built another house. He made some money. Guess what? He built another 10 roomed house worth millions. Oh my God. Now he's been given another one to build as a resort somewhere. Guess what? That man has his own house now from one suit. Five years. Limwambia, your suit, which you work at glass. Work at glass. You were display. Pale. Mali, what one? Atawana, Unan Shakatoto. No, no, you suit. Five years suit. I'll continue with this on Tuesday. Let me pray. Stretch your hand to heaven. I'm going to pray. Karaza Gataba Shizi Atada. As I pray, choir come and come on the stage in Jesus' name. Father, I bless you. I honor you, Lord. As God's people lift their hands. Lord, I'm praying that this generation...